Hey everyone, welcome back. The third Cosmo has arrived. And now I have three L10A in one shed. Crazy. Okay, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna recreate the inner structure of this Cosmo bonnet using the Pull Max. I'll make a die to make this profile and make an outside skin for it. So never made a whole bonnet before and never made an inner structure like this before. So see how this goes. So first thing, just make a template of this inner structure. And I just use one mil. I use snips and a flapper. It takes me about 30 seconds to make a template. And then I can just draw that onto like 20 mil by 20 mil plate to make a die for the full max. See, I'll draw this outer on a big sheet and then it's like a 25 mil border. So I'll make a little guide for this. So it'll be a 25 mil stop there so that it will only let me feed it into it a certain depth. And hopefully that gives me the outer shape. And I've got to work out how to do the insides. And with the fence system, I just need it to be 25 mil from there. So if I just weld a little chunk in there, it won't let me push the sheet past it and should act as a guide. Okay, so just got that little block welded on there. For one time dies like this, there's no need to go crazy and TIG them together, just get the little shit slinger, make it on, job done. Now with any luck, it won't let it pass that stop. Okay, so happy days, that worked. Test piece, second one. So, all good. So now I've just got to draw this perimeter on the sheet and try it out. Just traced the outer shape and I'll cut it. I'll change the dies over in the pull max now. I'll put the shears back in it and I'll trim that shape out. Well, any straight cuts, I'll just get them close. Now, changing tooling, so easy on this machine. I've got a offset lower bottom that's uh, permanently set up for the shears so I just crack the top gland nut off crack this bottom that comes out then you drop the tool on the ground if you're not careful Sweet. and it's just a matter of just slipping slip the shears in put the top in tighten it up done it's already set up uh, distance wise I keep it all set up the same so it's just ready to chuck the shears in if you want to cut a round shape. Okay, top nut's tight, this is tight, you just switch it to cutting mode, done, ready to cut. About 30 seconds pretty much, change the tooling over. Okay, with any luck, we'll put this toboggan into the jaws and see what mess it makes. So all this should work pretty easily but I think this tight corner here I might have to cut the stop off and do manually I'm not sure how it will actually go okay first lap around half depth seems to be going okay see what I mean about the corner easy to make a mess there hopefully it all comes good all trial and error here lots of error so I'm about half depth and it's looking pretty rough. The corners are uh, giving me a bit of grief. Same as up here, had a bit of a bunch up. So I have to just address those before I run it through again. Might stay away from the corners for the next pass. So I'm at like 80% depth here. I just got to tidy up the corners where it doesn't obviously like going around nicely. So I'll tidy that up by hand and then hopefully trim the edge where it's long and might be able to get away with just one more pass full depth it's got to tidy up the wobblies first so that it doesn't drive over them if I address them now should get one pass and hopefully that's the final pass on it okay so still a few wobblies here and there I've got to put the arc in the panel as well by stretching this edge and then running it through the die as well and pulling up or down uh, the corners are still 
Give me a bit of green, <coughs> too tight. This is a lot more round, so I might just have to beat this area out manually. But this is all a learning curve. I've never really made an inner bonnet structure before. I've done little sections here and there, but I've never made a complete one. So I'm learning something. Now that I've done the perimeter lap, I can't put it in that way without it clashing on here. So I'm going to have to modify the die now to be the same distance here as it is on here. So I'll modify the die now that I've got the outer lap done. And then I can hopefully start doing these inner pieces. Okay, I just run the other side through the modified die, it's got a relief for this side and it's 18mm to match the center so now just got to draw it on this and then make a mess okay so I've marked and cut out the center one and I've allowed 35mm for it and hopefully it works Okay, that's first pass. A little jittery in the corners. A little wobble here, so I'm gonna knock those in. Flatten this area here so it's not upsy downsy. And then I'll do a next pass through it again. I've got to take the tooling out to get it actually inside there. So I'll go flatten those areas there and then I'll do another pass. So drawing this out seems to be a strategic nightmare to get this like square section. So I don't think I'm gonna bother. I think I'm just gonna run it pretty much to the center and not have this center triangle just do two larger squares and bring them in closer and not worry about the square just let them just come down to a skinny point kick back out and then I'll see how much room's left over I don't think there's much room there to run that bottom triangle for the bonnet catch so it's not exactly a dead replica of it but it's an inner bonnet skin so I don't think any purist is gonna whinge at my inner bonnet skin when the rest of the car is completely cut apart okay so all cut out and yeah as i said i'm just changing the shapes gonna do two big triangles instead of trying to do it right down to a squared off triangle area just that's just a nightmare so i don't see any point or any gain in trying to do that the car is not an original car it's not going back to dead stock concourse bullshit just getting it done and you can't get a bonnet skin so you just make one so i don't think anyone's going to whinge it i've made my own bonnet skin and it's not exactly the same as an original one if you've got a problem with that buy me a bonnet if you can find one buy me one send me one thanks okay so i'm hitting the hinge here that's why i can't sit on this so i'll check it on the other car okay fitting better So on the factory bonnet, it drops down double the thickness for the bonnet catch. I've left it flat for one reason, being simpler, and the other reason is the ITVs notch out inside it. So if I can raise this area up, slim that 30 mil out of it, then it makes my life a lot easier. I don't have to have a little notch out in that catch area. I can just leave it dead flat. So I was just doing a last little clean up pass of any little wobblies and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I made a fucking mess here. I must have went too far before I started turning for the corner and it got all caught up and then just started munching it. So i uh, got to pull that out and then just tap it up how it should be. Whoopsie. Okay, so I gave it a little bit of a shrink and now I'm just sharpening the edge up because it's really rounded off from tipping it over. So I just got to sharpen the edge up, dolly underneath, just tapping the top surface just to sharpen this top area up and then I'll tap the side round and shrink it some more to give it 
whatever arc it needs. I might need to wheel the center depending on where it pulls, but we'll see. Okay, so I use the hammer and dolly to turn the lip to a 90, and now you can see how flat the center is. It's not uh, not the right shape at all. So I'm gonna chuck that in the wheel and put some shape in the center. So yeah, it hasn't got the shape in the center just yet, so it's not letting the sides pull down. This is where it'll all turn to shit because my experience with shaping is extremely beginner level so I'll probably over shape it and fuck the whole panel but that's how you learn so yeah it was going all right and I tried to tighten this edge up and I fucked it it just started to bunch up I thought I'd linear stretch it back down but yeah it's just getting worse and worse and worse so pretty much put this in the bin and I'll start again and make another outer skin. So yeah, I overshaped and ruined the first attempt at a bonnet skin. So I'm going to try another attempt at it and I'm going to shape the center area first and I'm going to tip the edge last. So I think that's the way to do it. I think I did it backwards by tipping the edge first and then trying to add shape to the center while battling the edge contorting it. It just made it a nightmare and that's how it got away from me so easily. So I'll try and make another skin now and see how I go. Because this Cosmo is going back to standard, I'm going to make some tooling to replicate these beads and these end finishes now so that I can make a floor pan for this one. Because this is the only one of the three that's actually going to run standard floors. So I'll make them exactly the same. So let's get to it. So I want to make the die for the floor pan in this Cosmo. So just use this little tool and then you just draw it onto some one mill and then you've got an upper and a lower die template and you can keep these in your toolbox. Some people use uh, body filler, bog, bondo, whatever you want to call it but I feel like you can make this in about 30 seconds. By the time you've even mixed up that shit you've already got your templates and you can keep them in your toolbox instead of having a chunk of bog in your toolbox. So. Yeah, I don't know why people do it that way, but you do you. It's uh, indenting the top surface a smidge, so it's a bit of fine tuning. Cool, so that's the test piece, bit of fine tuning, but got it mint now, so happy with that. Got to uh, get some cardboard and template this floor area and then start drawing the pattern on and work out a guide system to get all these implanted into it. So I'm just going to do a little test piece about this wide just to figure out the center, the spacing of these and figure out what happens here when I actually fold it. I'm assuming I'm going to have to cut it, relieve it and then fold it up to it and then just TIG each join but we'll see. It might be able to go around the corner because the die is only 10 mil. So maybe if I radius the very ends of the die and then fold the piece, it might actually let me go around the corner. It's just going to be a bit of a trial and error thing. Not sure how it'll work out. So I just bent a, bent a bit of rough scrap. I just want to see what it does if I try and drive over that fold. All right, so let's see what happens if I try and drive over the fold. Yeah, so as expected, it just straightened it out. It's not really enjoying it, it's just wanting to force this back straight. So I think I might just run it straight and just cut a slit, bend it to where I want and take it back up. Otherwise I think I'll be fighting too much with the in-between areas here when it'll just be quicker just to cut and TIG it. And as for the finisher, I'm thinking of just making another die set that has this in there. Probably a bit thicker, probably like yeah, probably 30 mil, maybe stacked and that way I can just clamp it manually to finish the ends off. I think that'll be the easiest way to do those. Now, with my caveman brain, I'm thinking the easiest way is to make it out of something that already exists instead of making it from scratch. So if I need like a round radius for it to be squashed over, at least the bottom die I can make out of this and then the top die, I'll die grind it to shape out of some plate because I don't have any fancy CNC machines or anything like 3D printing or anything like that. I've got hands and a grinder and just get it done. This is why I always just keep random shit 
and tubs and boxes and stuff so I think I'll use this as the um, upper die so I'll just be able to fill this in with some weld to suit what radius I want but it should be pretty close after some cutting and shutting better than starting from scratch anyway so see what we can cobble together just uh, sliced it apart on my 150 way access CNC machine and I'm hoping to put it around here take some out of the guts of it and then take it back together and that way these wrap up the sides a little bit and then yeah make the lower out of just a nut round the nut off and then just start digging until it, I can get it to a round shape now the idea of using a nut as the bottom die is it's already the right width for the bead and that way I can just taper it off like right down to nothing and get that shape in it dig the inside of the nut to build up some more material in there but uh, it's just better than starting from scratch so yeah it'll look something like that just cut it roughly and then just start infilling it okay so just tacked to some key stock this will be the lower die goes in the machine so now you can see why I just used the nut I can just roughly tig it all on there and then just shape it to suit same as this piece so I'll weld that to another piece for the upper and then yeah, just shape from there so now just uh, tweaking it all to get it to perfectly mesh and get the right clearance in there it's the fiddly bit as we can see we're good at the front area but it starts to open up at the back so I've got to add some material here so I played with it a fair bit to get it to be right in my opinion and uh, hopefully I've left enough clearance so we'll soon find out Let's see how it does on this pass comparison is these two were just single squash downs manually and this one was actually powered so it's actually cleaner if I just do a single squash so I have to see there decide what I want to do so that's a few hours just setting all the dies up tweaking them figuring out all the measurements and setting all the stops and stuff up so I'm glad I only have to do two of these floor pans it is worthwhile making the tooling to make them spot on because it's a rare car but at least I can actually make them again in the future. I know how to make them and I do have this tooling now made if I ever want to put this shape in a floor or something somewhere. So I thought my eyes were deceiving me, but it's actually 90 mil, 90 mil, 100, 100, and then 80. So bizarre. Okay, so passenger sides all marked up. The tunnel side tapers and then short here and I'm pretty sure there's a drain plug there. Uh, this one's real short, the rest are all level and then the center bead runs all the way to the back here and then up past and this is a fold, fold and then the tunnels sits over the top of here and then there's another return uh, down on that side and at the front though so the front returns down and that side returns down so it's a pretty complex floor I used oil on this run because I actually care about this piece. This is the actual floor. Much crisper and nicer pass. And then instead of just literally just going boom to max setting, I just went gradually, just bumped it up, bumped it up, and did like 10 passes across here just so it's nice. So I've tried to contain a bit of the swelling as I go now with the mallet just to see if it makes any difference. Well, I already fucked it up. I wasn't meant to do these two. <laughs> Idiot! So about halfway through the third pass, just taking a rest, my arms are killing me. It's not just a uh, push a button, I'll put a lever and feed it in thing. It's a proper upper body workout. This really takes it out of you, forcing it through these machines and holding it from jumping out against the guide and stuff. Like you've really got to put your whole weight against it and then feed it side to side. So it's not, just a simple easy thing that you can just chuck in press a button it's still a lot of manual labor here and you can get that far into it and the guide vibrates loose and then you're off track same as here fucking hell <laughs> these are a fucking nightmare i'm glad i only have to do two 
I just went to do the end ones and I was like, why didn't I run that the whole way? Idiot. So now I've got to change tooling again just to run that to the ends so that I can finish the ends off. Uh, so I want to change the tooling over and I dropped the C-spanner. You think I can find it? I've looked on the floor about 50 times. Under cars, everywhere. No fucking idea where it's gone. <laughs> I just need to change the tooling so I can do two more little presses and I'm done. I can start uh, hitting it around by hand. Fuck me. I've no joke, looked for about 10 minutes, swearing, carrying on, thinking where the fuck is this thing gone? Yeah mate. Use that one. Okay, so I started bashing down all the waves. Now I've just got to mark in 90mm, do all the slits, turn that up and fold this flange down and then continue just uh, treating all these little areas that are just rising up and need to be stretched here and there so yeah geez having a shocker on this one I don't know why I made it so short but yeah it's got to be here 145 so I don't know what I've done there fix that now and then fold the edge up okay fixed up this one made it longer now I'm just ready to cut all the incisions and so it's roughly just bashed out, a few little wobblies here and there to sort out and I've got to TIG the joins, but I've got the drain holes all marked out, the seat rail sits on top of here, the rail sits on top of this one and this carries under and then this flange turns down and spots to the tunnel. So firewall flange sits on top of that, this passes through, that also turns down and spots to the front, and this one slips under and get spotted on top. Look, I'm not going to complain with that. There's a bit of slapping around still to do and just dress up like the ends a bit more where it's bunching up and the wobbly. But I can I can sort all that. It's going to get better and better the more time I spend on it. But I just want to make some tooling to replicate the drains now. And I've just got everything just marked out where it's all got to go. <laughs> so I started marking the drains out and I thought it looked weird. And I was like, ah. That drain's got to be here, because you missed this bead. So, idiot, I've got to add that one in. Okay, so that's how it's meant to be. I added that last one in, marked all the drain holes now to go, and then just got to just slap it around where it needs. All the little wobblies coming through, but the rail flange sits on top here, the seat rail flange sits on top here, and this gets turned down, this gets turned down, and gets spotted to like the, uh, tunnel edge and this one slips under and gets spotted to the sill man I'm actually having a shocker here eh? I thought yeah I'll add that piece in there and then I've somehow <laughs> made this too long I don't know what side of the die I must have pressed it on but yeah idiot I gotta shorten that up so I don't know I might be putting this in the bin it might come good I'll soon find out if I can shorten these up Idiot. Yeah, so I got the end one correct. One out of five ain't bad. Got to shorten all these up now. Idiot. Okay, so I've shortened them. Now with any luck I can get rid of this material. Thankfully, the rail edge comes right to the end of that. So the flange should sit on top and hide whatever mess I've made. Alright, so just saved it. Luckily the flange goes over the top so I can tap all this down and it's hidden. In saying that, I probably will remake this when I do the other side without any mistakes. I'll probably just remake this passenger side because I can. Alrighty, so it's Saturday and I'm still pretty keen so I'm going to try and do the driver side floor while it's fresh in my memory and then I'll make some tooling to do the drains on both of them, get them both to the same point. So here we go, let's mark it out. So it looks virtually the same, same ribs, but has an extra dipped down area for the accelerator pedal. So get started on marking that out now. Okay, marked out. Hopefully no mistakes this time, but this area drops down for the accelerator pedal and then actually tapers back a little. This is a fold. I've got the center marked for this speed. I've got my stop marks everywhere so don't run them too long this time idiot so they all taper down for the rail 
the spacing still throws me off how it's 80, 90, 90, 100, 100. So it's off. Visually looks so weird when you do the beads too, but there's uh, supporting pieces under the rails that go to the side of the sill, so it makes sense. So on the last pass now, these two, and then I can move on to, I gotta bash it down a bit on the ends, and then change tooling, squash the ends down on all of them, and then I gotta work out how to do this area. It's like a big 15 mil step in for the accelerator, and then when this folds up, it actually tapers across as well, so it'll be, I might do a test piece on that before I go full ham. So it's a test piece, 15 mil drop for the bead roller. It's got to taper off to nothing because the rail, uh, the firewall, sorry, flange sits on that. So taper it off from nothing, start it, and it's got to roll right up on this flange too and taper this way. So pretty tricky shape. I'm not going to do any more test pieces, just going to run it, whatever. I was too busy talking shit and I nearly actually started it on this line, whereas that's another fold line. Idiot. So yeah, run that, just tape it off for the 45. And then I'll just blend it off to nothing here where the rail sits over the top of it. So hopefully I can cut all these slits now, tip this up, and uh, yeah, start sorting all of the distortion out. So cut and bent up this area, got the bead roll here, and I've gave myself the definitive line there of actually where it's got to be straightened down. So now I've got to stretch all this area down to blend that nicely. Here we've got the uh, premium caveman package. Got a bit of flat bar and just stretching it down manually with a mallet. So primitive tooling, primitive, primitive results. So just painstakingly using a bit of timber and hammer just to settle all the distortion down where everything needs to stretch more. It's a painful process, just so much whacking, but it's getting better the more you do. So <sighs> see how it looks soon enough. Okay, so I've got them slapped around basically to the same point. Still a lot of distortion everywhere that I've got to go address. But I've got this roughed in. Um, I pretty much want to make drain tooling now. And then do all the drains. There's another drain up here, here. And just the two at the back on each. And then I'll progress further with them. Because I know when I add these I might distort it even more. So just want to try and go bit by bit. So V-Band sits on the underside the perfect diameter and the nut is the perfect locating diameter so you just put a chamfer on it still allow it to sit in the recess put a bolt through pull it down bingo bango there's your drain so I just put this in the uh, lathe that I've got and uh, just putting a chamfer on it slowly so a lot of caveman tooling like this will occur because I don't have a drill press uh, lathe Device. <laughs> I pretty much just uh, yeah, just battle along, get it done however I can with what I got. Okay, so here's what I'm going to make for the drain tooling. We've got it's a two-inch V-bend, and that's the right outer diameter. And we've got an R200 nut for the axle, which I've got a chamfer on it. So yeah, just drill it with the hole saw. The nut locates the hole. Clamp it on top. Bolt through random spaces that you have because you can't be bothered getting a bolt the right length tighten it up done now another addition I tried it without a locator and it does go a little bit oblong so you can just put the same washer that you got off the R200 nut in the mix and it will locate it all center alternatively if you don't want to use the nut and trust that the washer is going to hold it central just draw the outer diameter on the underside and you can check it before you tighten it up. Cool, and there's your drain indent. I'll compare it to the car's one in a sec. Look, I don't think anyone's gonna argue with that. It's the same OD, it's the same ID, it's the same drain hole. The chamfer might be maybe one degree off, but the, uh, I think it's pretty much the same. Okay, so that's drains added everywhere. And just a lot of uh, relief work with the mallet and some timber just to get rid of any swelling before it goes any further but I can adjust all that 
from this point on just got them roughed out at the moment haven't tigged all the joins yet i just want to make sure the angle is perfect before i go and tig it so i want to sit them in the car and then pull them back out weld them all up i know there's another drain in this area but i'm not finished shaping this yet so i don't want to add a drain yet i'd rather just add it last but i'm going to wrap things up here i'm going to start unpicking the floor pans out of it so that i can figure out what happens with the blend and stuff underneath the firewall flanges and a bit further up so i'm going to have another go at making a bonnet skin as well for this one because i overshaped this one and ruined it so i'll have another go at the outer bonnet skin and uh make another video but thanks for watching stay tuned